You see this BMW? It's very low, very low to the ground. The reason is because this BMW is equipped with rear air suspension on the rear axle, as many other BMWs. Uh, but the 750 is known because the parts are super expensive. Each shock absorber costs around $1,500 uh, dollars each side, so it's two, so that means it's going to be around $3,000 in the pair. But you can buy them aftermarket, um, eBay, Amazon, and you can pay less than half of the price. We are going to do a video on how to replace the rear shock absorbers, so that way you can save some extra money on labor. This process is going to be similar to all BMWs F01, F02 from 2009 to 2015 and some other BMWs that are newer or older since the way to replace the shock absorber is going to be similar. The only problem is how you're going to replace it because there is things in there, here and there, that are different. So that is the only thing that is going to vary. But the basic on how to replace it is going to be the same. So to start this job, we have to come to the trunk of the uh, vehicle and disconnect the fuses then go for the air suspension. You have to disconnect the fuse 152 and 158 as you can see here and uh, they are located in here. You have to uh, lift the vehicle up. I have some jack stands over here and there is another jack stand on the other side because we're going to be replacing both of the shock absorbers. We can start removing the wheel so we can get access to the shock absorber. To continue this, we have to go to the interior and disconnect the top area of the shock absorber. The area we're going to be working on, on is going to be here. Here is where the speaker is located, so we have to remove the speaker to get access to the top uh, strut bolts. It's going to be three bolts, then we have to remove. So, please, we're going to remove this from here. This is just the headrest, and we have more access here. So, what we have to do is to get a little small tool like this one to pray this thing out okay there it is we have a couple clips over here and that's the reason why it's hard to remove it we are going to use a eight millimeter socket to remove these bolts over here it's four bolts it's one two three four four bolts holding the speaker And now we are going to get the speaker off and that's about it. We have this plug over here, just pull it and it comes out. Here we have the access uh, area for the uh, shock absorber bolts, the top bolts. So over here you can see that there is something, all you have to do is to get it off. It's already open, so it looks like someone already worked on it. So and now you can see that that is the axis for the bolts. So there is it is super hard to see those bolts. So uh, I'm going to unscrew them so you can uh, get to see. Right here is one bolt. It's really hard. Over here is one bolt. The other one is right here, and I have to remove a little cover and hold it over here and here is the little cover it's a little plug you have to remove and then you have access it, it is going to be right here in this area and the other one is going to be located right here over here so it's three bolts so i'm going to unscrew them with a 13 millimeter socket and a ratchet use a magnet to extract the hole, the nut, it's right here, see, there is one. Here I have the second one, and here I have the last one. So there is three bolts that are just like this one. Then you have to remove, and basically this is all we have to do in the interior. Uh, the next step will be to remove the components from the exterior. I have to remove this cover, this is a mud cover, and there is a couple bolts like this one, eight millimeter. There's one over here, one over here, another one over here, and it goes around, and you have another two bolts over here. Also, we have to remove these little nuts, plastic nuts over here, then are 10 millimeter. So there is four in total, I believe. There is one over here, one over here, and there is another one uh, somewhere over here. There's another one over here, so it's around four of those.
bolts were removed, so now it's just time to get this thing off completely. And that's about it. Alright, now we can continue. By removing this hose over here, this one over here, that is a 10 millimeter hose. Then we have to remove and when you disconnect the hose you're gonna hear air leak see that air leak because this shock absorber still has some air left there right see this is the line let's put it on the side you have to remove this cable over here, see this? Okay, here. It is to remove this one here, to pry it open. Okay, we get this one off. This is the cable for the charge absorber. We pray this little clip over here, and we remove the plug. And that's about it. That's it. This is the plug. So the last thing that is holding this shock absorber, it is this ball over here. See this ball? Behind here there is a ball. That is a 13-16, 21mm. Then we have to remove. That one is very tight, so um, for that it's very necessary to use an impact gun because there is no room to access the ball over here and uh, and it's super tight so you need an impact gun to make it easy and here we have the ball see it's a super long ball and uh, that's why it's very good to use an impact gun because if you don't have an impact gun you're not have trouble removing it this shell absorber is still is making some pressure to the uh, suspension so as you can see the ball is completely removed and the chair absorber is still still in the same position so you have to hit it here and once you hit it it will just go back up so be careful not to have anything in there so see and that was it you can remove the balls that are holding the brake caliper right here we want to remove these ones, I believe these are seven millimeters. So we're gonna remove the two bolts right here because that's gonna be the easiest way so we can get the shock absorber out. All right, so the caliper is completely removed. You can see there's more room, so now it's easy to remove this one because there is nothing here, see? Just to get this bolt, I mean this cable out of the way. And we have the shock absorber. Nice and easy. Have the plug, and that's the way you gotta come out. For some reason this one is leaking somewhere but uh, this one is not leaking that much the driver side is the one that is leaking the most that's why uh, it, it, it leans more to the driver side and uh, but uh, you have to replace them in pair that would be the best way to repair it don't only replace one side replace both because that would be the best way to fix this problem so here we have the shot absorber and what we have to do is to compare it to the new one. Wanna put them right next to each other. And uh, you can clearly see then they are similar. They have the same bolts over here, the same actuator here, the same junction of cables, the same little thing over here, then connects to the hub and the line, then it's exactly the same. And the size. You can see the size, this one looks a little larger. And the, the reason why is because this one is new one. This one is already compressed. That's the reason it looks a little uh, shorter. So uh, other than that, everything looks all right. So let's start the installation of the new shock absorber. We are going to insert shock absorber the same way as we remove it. 
see like this it goes in like this <coughs> goes back in and there you go okay that is the first step to get it aligned over here the next step is to align this one this part over here with this one over here see how different is the height of this one this one is super up compared to this one so we have to break this one down to actually get to the point where we can insert it. so we're gonna be using a prey bar like this one a long prey bar to pray somewhere so we can get it down for example we can pray over here and see we can get it all the way down so that's what we're gonna do so we need the, uh, the help of someone else for that más ahí está bien pero suelta So uh, the shock absorber ball is already in place. You could see how hard it is to get it all the way to drop the uh, suspension pressure down. So that way we can align the ball over here. So the next step now is to align the bolts that are inside. So for that, I, you need help as well because you need someone then rotate this one around to move it around and you inside the cabin inside over there inside the seats over here you have to see where the bolt is going to be located so that way you can insert the shock absorber okay espérame. Bájelo para acá, para adentro. Ahí. Ok. Bájelo. Súbalo, déjalo que se vaya. Ok. Espérame ahí. Dale vuelta así. ¿Para dónde está usted? Ajá, pero así, mira. Así como para acá, la rueda para acá. Dele. ¿Más? Dele, ahí va. Sí, dele, ahí va. Dele. Ah, ahí está. Ahí está. La perra, eh. All right, so that's what you have to do to actually get it in. It's a lot of work. Extra hand is needed for this because there is very tight room over here to actually see. And that shock absorber is super hard to rotate because you have to move it to one side to another depending where it's needed. Luckily, it's done, so I don't know if you're gonna be able to do it yourself anyway, but at least I'm showing you how to do it. So now, easy part, continue to putting everything back together. We are going to relocate the plug as this little thing over here. This aftermarket shock absorber, for some reason, is hard to place this tap. It, but anyway, as soon as you put it over here, it will hold because this is made to hold the connection inside. That way, it doesn't come up. And you put the cover back. <laughs> you have to install the cover back. This is very important. We are going to relocate the cable. So as the cable goes around, see, you have to reconnect it back where it goes, exactly where it goes. Tie the bolt, this bolt over here. That is very important, don't forget it as well. So we're gonna be using the same impact gun to tighten it, just make sure to don't over tighten it with the impact gun, that's all. Then you have to relocate the holes, that is very important. If you forget to relocate these holes, it's going to be super hard after. 
So just make sure to relocate it because right now is the time. I almost forgot to relocate it. Yeah. So this will be an issue if you do. So just make sure to remember. That way you can prevent a lot of problems. All right, so pretty much we are ready with the exterior components. Then we remove to uh, remove the shock absorber. Um, uh, so now we have to reinstall the caliper. Um, that's pretty easy. Let's put it back together right here. And that's it. Uh, basically, we're done here. So we are going to relocate all the components we remove or this this one just fell from there so i was gonna reinstall it all right so everything then had to be done to replace the shock absorber in the exterior of the vehicle is done so the last thing we have to do is to go back to the interior to relocate the nuts then we remove and to put everything back together so to reinstall the nuts we're going to be using the magnet again to place them here because you don't have room to insert your fingers so you need the magnet it is hard so all we have to do is to align it and that's one now i just have to rotate it Okay, it's in. Now we're just gonna rotate it with no one finger. And the last one is going to be the same way with the magnet. All right, so the three nuts are inside. The next thing to do is to grab a small ratchet. This small ratchet is just to tie the bolts, like the nuts, very fast. I mean, it's just to fast tighten. And once we get this one completely tight, we're gonna use the other ratchet, the bigger, the bigger ratchet, this one right here, so we can tighten the nuts completely and secure them. All right, three bolts were tight, completely tight. So uh, now this thing over here, we have to place it back all the way inside um i actually remember then we have this little plug over here and this plug goes all the way over here and i'm going to place it back all right it's in so now put this one back the speaker it's the next thing to install we have the plug over here we're just going to plug it back this way like this it and put back in install it to four bolts the next thing is to reinstall this cover is and just clip it right. that's how it like nothing happened uh, last thing to do is to reinstall the headrest And that's it. So this side is completely done. The show absorber on this side is completely replaced. And uh, what we have to do now is go to the other side and replace the other side. This one is already replaced. It's brand new, you can see. And the process is going to be exactly the same, just in the opposite side. And some components are going to be easier to remove because there is less components on this side. On the other side, you have the fuel tanks and everything. So it's going to have a little more components. So uh, probably this side is going to be easier for you than the other side. Anyway, uh, now it's time to uh, get the vehicle up so we can remove the stands and uh, get it to the ground. You can see that the vehicle is all the way to the ground. 
and the level of the grip flow is all the way low. And the reason is because the suspension uh, fuses are completely disconnected. And that's the reason why you have to disconnect it because the vehicle has to go to the ground before starting the engine. That way we can get uh, the right level before starting the vehicle. In this case, we can see the clearance that we have over here, which is this much. Let's go check the other side. And the other side is kind of the same. You can see, that's the reason why it's important to replace both of the shock absorbers at the same time, because if you replace one and the other one you don't, probably the size of the shock absorber can vary and you wanna have a, probably a different level. What I'm gonna do is to reconnect the fuses. The 40 amps is right here. Right here, just to place it back over here. And just place the cover back. The cover is back. To raise the suspension back, we have to start the vehicle. So let's start the vehicle. So uh, at the end, after getting done with this BMW, the air compressor went bad. The air compressor wasn't building any air. And that was the reason why the car is not lifting. It still is low. It's not raising anything up, see? The level of the vehicle is pretty low, so that's not good. But uh, the problem is that the shock absorbers are not getting air. If you fill the air manually with the shock absorbers, they're great. That means then they, they, they're good and they hold the air. But as soon as the system starts working, it drains and refills the uh, pressure on the, uh, the air springs. And in this case, this compressor is not building enough pressure. So at the end, that was the problem. I guess uh, the recommendation is if you're going to replace the shock absorbers, replace the shock absorbers and the air compressor at the same time. I guess that will be the best recommendation because probably it's gonna get bad and then you're gonna have the same problem as I had right now. Uh, air suspension is just problematic so I guess from now on that will be the thing. Replace the air compressor and the shock absorbers at the same time because probably it's gonna get bad on you. So these are all I have to share with you. Uh, if you have any questions, any opinions or any recommendation experiences about this video use the uh, comment section below or contact me on Instagram Francisco Maya YouTube you can find my cameraman there also for anything you can uh, contact us if you wanna if you want us to check your car too we can do it probably we can do a video about it and you can be on a video too and um, uh, when I do a different video following this car so stay tuned and also if you wanna send any help you can do it too you can use the uh, description of this video where I have details where you can send help to our channel if you think our content is very helpful for you. So until next time, like the video, share it, subscribe. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned.